Previously at the World of Tech, we've taken a look at the Nokia E7 hardware, and in this video it's time to take a look at the Nokia E7 Symbian software. The lock screen on Symbian 3 is very simple, with a nice big clock and a simple unlock button. The main user interface of the Symbian 3 operating system is made up of tiles and widgets, each widget leading to more information on your required interest. When touching any widget or anywhere else on the screen as a matter of fact, you're going to feel a slight vibration. This can be turned off in system settings. Most of the widgets are going to link to other parts of the operating system itself, however some of them like BBC iPlayer are going to link direct to the mobile version of bbciplayer.co.uk for an online experience. Other box standard widgets including new mail and calendar entries. Symbian 3 has its own feature that HTC Sense does. It has multiple pages so you can customise it to your preferred like. Customising can't get any easier, just like iOS, you hold down on the widget and drag it to wherever you like. Some of your own widgets include gravity tweets, mail, music player, notifications, player and search widget. After customising it, you can simply just click done and your customization is done. When sliding the phone to the side to use the inbuilt keyboard, you will notice that the screen will twist to suit your position. Sliding back the keyboard will normalize the screen. When at the main user interface, pressing down the home button will activate the menu bar. The tiled menu bar consists of calendar, contacts, music, web, messaging, the OV store, maps, social networking, plus much more. Let's start off by taking a more in-depth look at the web browser. The Symbian 3 web browser is a very nice browser and it offers full screen browsing unlike other devices and other operating systems in the mobile platforms. People need to realise full screen browsing doesn't mean limited to the options you can have. In the bottom right of the screen you'll find a small button that you can press and bring up more options. By tapping the globe in the middle you'll bring up the URL search bar. You can slide the keyboard up and type and the screen will rotate with you. If you're web browsing and you want to check the time without going back to the main menu, you will see just underneath the URL bar is a clock. Now I can already see the comments, Darren stop getting so hyped up about a clock. I know but I've actually used that more than I thought I would have done. Some of the extended menus include saving as a bookmark, reloading the web page, go to the RSS feeds, send the URL via email, or exit. My first thoughts about the operating system was how can it be a smartphone? Now when you go deeper in you will find out that there is many office applications that are going to help you improve your productivity while out and about. Quick Office is just one of them. Quick Office is a mobile application that allows you to do office tasks such as writing a document or editing some spreadsheets while on the go. If you're like me and have social media as part of your everyday life, then you're going to be pleased to know that the Nokia Symbian operating system has built-in social media widgets. This came to me as music to my ears, or sorry, should I say tweets to my ears. Symbian's on-screen keyboard isn't the worst I've seen but it's certainly not the best, so after switching to the side and using the physical keyboard I was rather disappointed that the screen didn't rotate within the application. Other than that it looks like Nokia and Symbian certainly have social media sussed. Symbian's 3 calendar is as simple as it can get, but simplistic doesn't always mean bad. 
you know, the fact that it works is actually a great start. Adding an event can't get much easier. Tapping on the day you'd like to add the event to and then filling out the required information and within seconds, you are fully booked. Whoops, hold up a minute. Some gentleman called Harold Camping has just told me that the world's going to end today, so I better stick that in my calendar and make sure that I don't forget. Otherwise I could be filming this review and bam, I'll never see you again. Jokes aside, apart from that, this calendar is very nice and extremely useful and the user interface of your daily plan is just as good. Now onto something that Apple haven't even mastered yet and that is multitasking. Symbian offers proper real multitasking rather than application switching. Now the user interface of multitasking for Symbian is extremely nice and the sort of thumbnail icons are clear and easy to see what you are closing and reopening. As you can see, I've recently been playing Angry Birds. In fact, I might just stop the review here and continue. Be right back. Welcome back. Well, I can assure you I'll be playing Angry Birds in a few hours, but for now, back to the tour. Just like social media, it looks like Symbian have practically got multitasking sussed. It's easy to close applications, reopen them, and access already opened applications. If you're like me and watch a lot of YouTube videos, I've got some good news and some bad news. Now, the bad news is, it looks like the widget for the YouTube application within Symbian is just a quick link for the lazy people, for example me, to get to YouTube's mobile URL website. However, on the more brighter side of things, it will play Adobe Flash and pretty well, but I will say there is a bit of lag, but it's not really noticeable. I would like to say well done to Symbian, however I'm unfortunately going to have to leave that one out. The YouTube playback is terrible quality and the audio isn't too astounding either. The YouTube application itself is a pretty nice application and you can change the format whether it's 16x9, 16x1 or 4x3, it's entirely down to you. Now this video was recorded in 720p and by clicking details you can easily see that the resolution it's played in is only well 176 by 144. Now if YouTube isn't your thing then you're not going to be too bothered about the bad media playback however if you are a big music lover then you have the option of OV music, radio or the built in music player. The music player is very very nice and extremely well organised. Options are clear and the music sounds very crisp. Some of the music options include of show open applications, go to music library, shuffle play, repeat, song details, equaliser and settings. Symbian also uses the operating system style of tiles and widgets. iOS however just uses tiles, which I will have to say, Symbian looks slightly better. Then again, iOS has been stale for ages now. Now let's take a look at Nokia's OV Store. The top bar insists of OV Store, categories, which is, I'm going to have to say, pretty limited with only four categories. There is also a search tab. Now I'm going to search for maybe a popular application, for example, Angry Birds. Okay, that was a fail, however, there must be a reason why it hasn't found that. Maybe if I put a space in between angry and birds. And last but not least, you can check your account settings. 
This page allows you to sign in or register for your free OV account. I'm also going to have to add that the Symbian operating system has some very interesting applications and it has a few thousand which is pretty nice as well. The Symbian 3 operating system does need a few touch-ups, besides that it definitely has the potential to be one of the best operating systems around. I'd even go as far as saying it's as good as Android, if not with a bit of touch-ups and a bit of polishing it has the potential to be better. Thank you for watching our tour on Symbian 3 from Nokia. For more information on the phone and the operating system, and for more of the latest tech news and reviews, head over to theworldoftech.net. And thank you all for watching.